and head coach Lindsey Gottlieb. Um, we will invite coach to offer up an opening statement and then uh, open it up to you all for questions. Great. Um, never got walk-up music before, so that was cool. That's an, that's an upgrade. Um, thank you all for being here. Uh, always an exciting day, particularly for me, uh, being back after a short hiatus. And I'm just really proud um, to be rep representing USC, uh, to be here with uh, Liz and Jordan. Um, this co conference somehow found a way to get tougher in the two years that I was gone, uh, which means the challenge will be greater. But I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we have a special group. Um, of young people that have really bought into everything um, uh, that I've tried to bring. Change is not always easy, but they've really embraced it, and I think it's going to be um, a positive thing for us. And just looking forward to this year with them um, and to competing in this conference. Z, welcome back. You described your time with Cleveland as a short hiatus. What did you learn about yourself as a coach there that's going to help you at USC? Uh, hi, Cindy. Um, it was life-changing. Uh, while it was short, I think it, it was a chance for me to get out of my comfort zone, um, to do something that was scary and hard, um, but really powerful. Um, it's the greatest professional sports league in the world with the best players, the best resources, and I just had an opportunity to grow in so many ways. Uh, and so I always thought that I would ultimately probably come back and be a head coach. I didn't know when or where, um, but USC isn't ordinary. Um, and when Mike Bone and his administration kind of came after me and uh, the opportunity presented itself, I knew this was the right place at the right time. But I also knew I wouldn't come back unless I felt like I was going to be better, um, sort of version 2.0 of myself, so to speak, with different uh, my mind expanded, um, different basketball resources at my disposal, and more just a different mentality. Um, and, and just an opportunity to come back and, and pour into a different group of, of uh, student athletes and do some special things. And so I, I think that there's a lot of ways that I'm different. I mean, we could talk technically. I think there's the use of analytics and my, my basketball mind in terms of spacing and things like that. But I think just also a renewed commitment to saying this thing is about just having these people reach their dreams, right, and um, what my impact can be. I think that's, that's the biggest thing. Respect the hustle. Um, Alyssa Charleston, Pac-12 Networks. Lindsay, I'm curious, when you say analytics, how do you think that plays out in women's basketball in the Pac-12 conference? How do you apply that um, in a literal sense this year? I mean, I don't think analytics speaks spe any specific language to women's basketball, men's basketball pros or, or college. I think it's just the idea of the way you see the game. How do you want to play? What are the type of shots that you want to get? Um, it's a great tool for self-assessment, like how can I make individual players better by teaching them a little bit more about where they want to attack on the court and how they want to be efficient, and then from an opponent scout um, situation as well, what are you trying to take away? Um, so in the NBA, like the games just keep on coming. It's just game after game after game. You don't really have practice time, so you have to find ways uh, to improve in short windows, and improvement looks different depending on the situation you're in, right? So we had a lot of young players, and we were trying to – um, you know, get them to understand, uh, you know, passes or, you know, outcomes per touch and things like that. So do I use all of it every day? No, but I think it informs the way that we're trying to play um, and hopefully get us to the point where, where we're, a, you know, a really successful basketball team because we're, we're playing a way that reflects um, just, uh, I think, what can be the most effective strategy for winning in women's basketball. And then question for Alyssa and for Jordan. Um, how have you guys seen that difference with, you know, having a coach that has coached NBA for sure, but has been, you know, a successful coach in the Pac-12 before? Um, have you seen some of those intricate things like work out with um, practice so far with what she's brought from what she's learned in NBA? Um, workouts have been so much different. Practice has been different. It's just a whole different energy for our, our team. And um, people just really want to work hard and come come to practice every day and put in – 100% together, so. And also, I just want to add, um, just having the opportunity to play for somebody that just has so much knowledge allows us to, like, grow our own game and just learn each other um, as a group. 
Hey, Coach. David Yapkowitz from uscbasketball.com. Um, just what have you seen out of your front court early on? I mean, you have uh, Alyssa and a couple other returners in, in Jordan Jenkins and um, Angel Jackson. you got a couple freshmen coming in, Clarice and Rhea. You know, they can play a lot of different styles. You can play in the post. You know, they can stretch the floor and shoot from three. Just, you know, how crucial is, is that front court going to be to your success this season? Well, you said it. You just listed five of them, right? And I think a lot of people would be happy to have any one player that you just listed, and, and we have five. Um, and so it's it's a it's been really fun. Um, I've had the good fortune to coach a lot of talented front court players. You know, some of whom are now in the uh, in the W. But this group is really unique, um, and it's unique in I think, as you said, the varied skill set. So I've thought about ways I, I've got to be able to get more than two of them on the floor at once. Um, so we've experimented with Alyssa Peely point guard, Alyssa Peely on the wing, posting up. I mean, I'm not joking. I um, actually had a long conversation with um, Stan Van Gundy the other day about how he used Zion last year, watching some Giannis stuff. I mean, I, I just I have to find ways to uh, be tough to guard and to be able to use that varied group in a lot of ways. Um, so it's, it's, it's really unique in that they're all very different, right? Like Clarice and Angel have the size. Rhea and Liz and Jordy have versatility. Um, so it's just, it's been fun to work with them. Um, I think the sky is the limit and we're still figuring it out. And that's part of my challenge throughout the years to find the right combinations and match us. But as long as they stay bought in, I think that's the type of group that can take pride as a group and say, we want to dominate. It might be this person this night, this person that night. But if they're bought into what they can do as a group, I think that's really important for us. And then Alyssa, you know, I know, um Last year, you talked about um, shoot, incorporating the three-point shot into your game a little more. Um, you know, last year you didn't shoot as many threes as you did your freshman season, but you shot a higher percentage. Um, you know, coach, you know, uh, was right now talking about how you know experimenting with you at point guard and, and your versatility there. Just kind of how's that coming along in terms of being able to expand your game a little bit? Um, like coach has said, it's been fun experimenting and doing all the things I used to do in high school. Um, it's definitely new in the college level, but um, you know I'm having fun with it, and I'm just gaining my confidence and being as best I could be in any position. So, hey, welcome back, Lindsay. Joan Bombasini from Pac-12 Networks. Alyssa, I love watching your game. Well, first of all, are you healthy right now? Yes, I'm healthy. Yeah. So, you know, listening to this, and how is your team different? You know, you mentioned the practices and. The team really is working, which is scary because you have af good athletes, obviously, Lindsay here. Like, what, do you, what are your expectations for yourself this year? I mean, you were freshman of the year. You're different, as you know, than any other player, I believe, in the Pac-12. You're different. You bring a lot of different variables to the game. What are your expectations for yourself? I have really high expectations for myself this year, especially – um, last year, not doing as well as I wanted to coming off of an injury, but um, I just, I think that I could do really good this year, and it's really just up to me and putting in work and um, gaining my confidence back. Just, um, yeah, my expectations are really high for me and my team. And for you, Jordan, you know, uh, you guys have always had a lot of good players on your team. What is the difference and what's it going to take for you guys to mesh together and really reach the potential that USC has? Um, I really think it's just gonna take us learning each other again and growing together as a team, especially with the new coaching staff. We're kinda getting into the groove of things, but I mean, it's gonna take some time, but really just learning each other, playing together, um, just getting comfortable, really. And last question, Lindsay, you know, now you're back recruiting again, okay? So is it a lot different recruiting at SC versus your previous school? I think it's a lot recruiting, different recruiting at SC than anywhere in the country, right? You're, you're talking about USC. Um, I would not have returned if I didn't feel like it was an opportunity of a lifetime. Um, this, is, this is a university that has really a Mount Rushmore of women's basketball history. Um, you know, I mean, you, you were in LA at the time, right? from Cheryl Miller to Lisa Leslie to Coop and Tina Thompson and the McGee twins. I mean, it's just, it's really insane. Um, and so now to kind of get this group and future players and people who are in the program now to, to say, there is no limit to how good we can be. That's an exciting thing. 
And I don't think, you know, there are too many country, uh, schools across the country who can say that and really believe it, but it's a challenge because we haven't been at that level in the last, you know, several years in recent history. Um, but yes, it's different uh, to recruit to USC, I think, than almost anywhere else would be. Hi, Coach. Kevin Dana with Pac-12 Networks uh, right here. Uh, Coach, I just want to kind of follow up on that recruiting question because your first recruiting class is top 15 in the nation. You bring in a couple of McDonald's All-Americans. What can you tell us about the freshmen you're bringing in? And also, kind of uh, to the last couple of points you were making, what is kind of the excitement you see on the recruiting trail with USC basketball since you've had the Trojan polo on? Well, I can't take credit for recruiting the class. I've, I'm very, very fortunate to inherit that class and really glad that, that they, they – um, decided to stay when a coaching change happened, which again, I think speaks to uh, the university. People come to play for USC. I don't necessarily know that they come to play for a particular person. Um, and also I think the team and the administration did a really good job of wrapping their arms around those young women when there was no coach, which is a hard place to be. Um, so we're really excited about you know the young class that we have. Um, and then uh, the second part of your question, like I have felt a tangible excitement I feel like um, the West Coast and really nationally has been waiting for USC to be relevant again. I mean, it's LA. It's the basketball hotbed of the world right now. Um, this, is, this is a university that our current administration values female athletes and specifically said, we want to go and get a coach that we think can help make this a championship program. And um, you know, that commitment to me, it wasn't, there's just, there's jobs that pop up and then there's the right fit and the right time. And the conversations I had with Mike Bone, uh, when I wasn't thinking about college basketball at all in May, other than to be a fan, right? He really changed my mindset um, in terms of his commitment. And that's something that I'm able to share with people that were recruiting. Like the only knock you know, on USC in the past several years is do they care enough about women's basketball? And I think now that the answer is a resounding yes. And it's really exciting to be part with this group to say, you know, let's get back to the tournament. Let's change people's perception, and it only builds from there. And I think they're the ones whose legacy is going to be left on that. It's not me, right? This is this is USC. It's 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 always going to be about the school uh, and the athletic tradition, and we want the current women's basketball program uh, to be at the at the top of that. Hi, ladies. Uh, Alyssa, uh, Janie McCauley, Associated Press. I I. I saw you go down at Santa Cruz that day with the ankle, and, and it just seemed like you never got to get in a rhythm last season of, of momentum from your, your freshman of the year season. Uh, how are you now physically, and do you feel like it's almost a, a fresh start for you after such, such a tough season for you last year with the ankle issues? Yes, last year was definitely kind of disappointing for me. Um, it was really hard to go through and yeah, I'm just really excited for this year and yeah, like you said, it is a clean, clean slate for me to just start new and show everybody that I'm back. <laughs> and what has Lindsay brought from that, that NBA experience that is sort of fun and, and <laughs> also just the credibility from, from having coached the, the pros to, to, that she can bring to your program? Both of you can weigh in on that. Um, she's brought a lot, a lot of new terminology, a lot of new actions. Everything is just so new to us, and we're doing a good job of executing them, and just um, we're still learning. So we continue to learn, and I think that we're doing a good job. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jordan, do you, do you want to? Yeah, I mean, just like I said before, just the knowledge um, aspect of it. We just get to learn more about the game, about ourselves, and just each other as a program, really. And Jordan, how eager are you to see Alyssa sort of, you know, back in her, you know, full strength and at her top form after, you know, just never being able to sort of rely on that ankle last year to do what she likes to do? Yeah, I mean, I'm very eager. She's a great player, and I love playing with her, so. I'm excited Please. for this season. <laughs> this question uh, is for Jordan, and it's a little bit <clears throat> off the basketball subject. Uh, I think one of the things that, that uh, really stood out to, to me about you was uh, your commitment to voices of your teammates and of yourself regarding mental health um, on and off the court. 
uh, whether it was from your previous school or coming into the, your experience at USC, that takes some guts. Uh, you stepped away a little bit from the game. Uh, you penned a letter that was very powerful. Uh, you, a couple of years ago, when people weren't talking about the importance of mental health for our student athletes, you were. What prompted that? And have you, have you uh, experienced some folks saying, oh my gosh, thank you, and let me pitch in and help you be that voice as well? Yeah, I mean, um, it wasn't easy kind of coming out and talking about myself and my struggles and just everything that I've been through and taking that time away from basketball honestly helped me find myself and really just the love of the game more but since then I mean I've heard a lot from a lot of different people just saying that they appreciate uh, my honesty and just like me being so genuine with who I am and just about the things that I go through I think it's I think it's really important for athletes um, in this kind of environment to just speak up about what they're going through because I feel like a lot of the time, a lot of people don't necessarily fear, like, feel comfortable with um, sharing their story and what they're going through just for fears of looking weak. But I think it just takes that much more strength to actually speak up about what's been going on and how you feel. Jordan, thank you for that, for everyone. We're so impressed by how the younger generation is, is breaking that wall of silence. So first of all, thank you for that. Um, Lindsay is your third college coach in your five years. You don't have a lot of time with her. I'm wondering what your philosophy is in terms of adapting quickly to your new coach, your new coaching, her coaching style, um, as you've had to do a couple times throughout your career. Yeah, I mean, it's not, hasn't been ideal to have three coaches in the past few years, but um, I just try to take everything as it comes and do whatever the team needs me to do. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hey, Lindsay, uh, Ben Parker here. Uh, good to see you. Uh, CardinalSportsReport.com. Um, I, I just kind of wanted to kind of get your thoughts on the differences between starting here at USC versus when you started at Cal. And, you know, when you started at Cal, you had some experience with the program as an assistant head coach, associate head coach, left but came back. This time you're coming into a new program that you haven't been at before. So just yet you come in with more experience knowing the league. So what, what's maybe different? starting with the USC versus Cal and any things you've maybe learned along the way that maybe has helped you that you didn't have when you started at Cal? Your move was bolder than mine, Ben. From, from Cal to Stanford, it, you went different, it really, different than Cal yeah. to USC. So mm, just, yeah, it was really bold, for yeah. sure. <laughs> um, I think the thing that's most different is that, that I'm different, right? I mean, I'm, what, it's 10 years since I started at Cal. Um, so I think the perspective I bring is different, right? You just you just gain knowledge with the years that you do it, gain relationships with, with players. You, you figure out um, how to connect with different people, different styles. Um, so I think I'm a little bit more self-assured and um, know, know a, few, a few more things just in terms of like letting it c come to me. There are a lot of similarities. I remember sitting in that locker room uh, when I got to Cal and I said, this isn't broken. Right? They had come off of a, two years in a row of not making the NCAA tournament, and I felt like it was my, my job not to rebuild or recreate, but to just galvanize that group and say, this is what we can do. And that is very similar um, to, to our situation at USC. I, I looked at them, I don't think it's broken. Um, you, know, you mentioned, Joan, like there's not a lack of talent in the room. Um, there's not a lack of willingness. I think it's just they need a leader to, to kind of show them the direction. Uh, we did a lot of like team culture things this summer, and they were great communicative in it but we did one on like what it takes to become elite and so I did a little bit of like PowerPoint with some data and analytics about teams that were in the Sweet 16 and teams that were in the Final Four and said to my coaching staff after like wow they were kind of quiet in that one and um, you know we said well they don't really know like they don't really know they, they can talk about what a, a good teammate looks like or what leadership looks like that I mean they're they're basketball players but I don't they need maybe someone to show them direction of no this is what how you become at the top of the pack. This is how you get a lead. And that's very similar to, I think, what that, that Cal team needed at the time. And we were able to get that done pretty quickly. So uh, those, those, I think, are the, the similarities. Michelle Smith, Pac12.com. Lindsay, you mentioned reaching out to Stan Van Gundy. I'm just curious how your resource base has increased from your experience in Cleveland in terms of the people that you can tap into, the knowledge base, you know, and how how valuable that is for you and ultimately the team. And then the second part of this is, what do you not know about this team yet until they get on the floor? And what do you think you know about this team already? 
So the first thing in terms of the resources, like as I just step away and kind of think about like where the journey has taken me, I, I think that that actually might be where like I fit in this whole story of women in men's basketball and college and pros is that there's a synergy between all of it that is much more natural than what people think, right? Um, you know, I've talked a lot about the, 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 the guys in the NBA, you know, it was very clear that what they value in a coach transcends gender, right? And same with the coaching staff and, and these players. You guys are asking them a lot of questions about what it feels like to have someone coaching the NBA. They don't, I don't think they think about it that way. It's just like, can I connect to them? Can I teach them something? That's what they care about. Do you care about me as a human being and can you make me better, right? And so in terms of the NBA thing, yeah, I feel like my resources are much more wider. I made a lot of relationships. And if you know someone, then you can call someone, right? And LA is a great place for that. A lot of the NBA, NBA guys live in LA in the off season. They all work out there. So we've made our arena available. They can come in and work out. I you know, had, had some of our guys come through um, during the summer, which is great. Um, so I'm hoping that, that that's, the, that's the reason I got connected in the NBA in the first place. I just wanted to learn. I wanted to go sit in, in you know, practices when Phil Jackson and Kobe and those guys were running the, the triangle and I got in their practices. And then obviously the relationship with Steve Kerr with, with the Warriors. And all of a sudden then the world changed where people started thinking about that women could potentially be in that league. But for me, it was always just about knowledge base. So now I see those resources as connecting that to be able to help our players, right? Like, why should, shouldn't list when it's time, you know, work out with an NBA guy to get ready, right? Like, Sanders is a bucket. She, she, the, step, the ways I can get her open is more similar to the ways that, you know, I would get a guy open in the NBA off of, like, some, some screening action or whatever. So uh, that's just the way my mind works. So the more that I can use those resources to help them as basketball players and people, I, I'm hoping that I can bring that um, to this opportunity. And that's really what it's about, right, to help get people where they want to go. And then, the, sorry, what was the second part? What am I going to learn? Um, I have not had to coach effort one day in practice. So I know that they're, they're really um, invested, they're into it, um, they're genuine. Um, I think you don't know until game time occurs, like how they're, how they're gonna respond to things, right? Like just, I think you, you don't know that, it's kind of fun, right? You figure out, we did a scrimmage day the other day, and it was kind of cool to see what they're like, you know, on game day. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of that, that excitement of the newness, um, but, but I know that they're, um, they're really good people. Um, they're committed to each other and to SC, and so I'm excited for the, the whole journey with them. Cheryl Coward, HoopThink.com. Hi, Lindsay. <laughs> um, this question is for the players. Um, your coach mentioned a little while ago uh, USC having a Mount Rushmore of players in this, this uh, WNBA season. They had the W25 with 25 of the best players of all time. Three of those 25 came from USC. Um, what does that mean for you as far as uh, your motivation to live up to that standard and be successful in your career uh, so far with, you know, Tina Thompson, uh, Cynthia Cooper, and Lisa Leslie being among the, that group? Um, I mean, it's definitely a great opportunity to be at USC, um, especially with the history. It's something that we're working towards every day to just get our names back up to where it's supposed to be. And, yeah, I think just the opportunity, it's great. Like, it's something that I think about at least every day, and I think um, I, I think our coach reminds us about it all the time. And yeah, um, I think it's great motivation to just uh, look up and see all those legends, and um, you know, to bring that name back up, like Jordan said. This question is for both Alyssa and Jordan, Cindy Brunson, Pac-12 Networks, play-by-play -play voice. We have seen the transfer portal light up like a Christmas tree, but you guys decided to stay. Why? I have so much love for this team. Um, we've been through so much together, and I think that um, those tough times brought us closer together, and um, it just made me want to stay and build with this team even more. Yeah, and I mean, for me, last year being my first year, um, it was good, and just the relationships that I built with everybody on and off the court, um, I just felt like there was more to be done. All right, if there's nothing else, Jordan, Alyssa, Lindsay, thank you so much.